Today on What Went Wrong, we light some sh Hello and welcome to What Went Wrong, the show that discusses filmmaking with independent filmmakers who made all the mistakes so you don't have to. I'm Kelly Coughlin with the bitter filmmakers Brett Mauser and Bradley Bates. Today we're going to talk about lighting. Brad, let's talk about lights. We didn't have any for the longest time, period. We had, uh, we had the headlights from cars, we had flashlights, we had those spotlights you could hook up to a car and reflect off of a reflector. When we, when we sold cartel killers, they asked us... There, there, were, there, were some, there were some issues. Something was too dark. It was the highway it. thing. It was the outside so thing we, at night. Yeah, they said, can you brighten it up? I said, can we just reshoot it? Yeah. <laughs> well, they gave, us, they gave us a week to brighten it up. Yeah. And uh, well, we said, we can just reshoot it. And they're like, you can reshoot it in a week? They'll like, have it to you in two days. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no, whatever. And we had it to them by Monday. And yeah. You know, we shot over the weekend. And they were like, yeah. and, and I remember what we did. We were Because there was no street lights, no nothing. It was just us. So there I was with one of those those uh, beams, those beams like, that you plug into the cigarette lighter. It was a million candle watt. And I had a reflector. Yeah, and an umbrella. Remember, we had a white umbrella yeah. we would shoot sometimes. We reflected off the on. umbrella to kind of diffuse it, or we had the reflector. Yeah. Wow. And the headlights, too. And it didn't light up much, so each shot we had to reposition and run around yeah. to each, each different person. Um, so, yeah, it was, I mean, even, even through the saga, I mean, I can say that until throughout the ponderous years, all the way through Ponderous, we never had a good light kit. Mm -mm. Uh, we had, I think, the majority. We had those A80s, well, I ended up which were a real flux. cheap one. It finally, like towards like after what what five six films we did, and I got like a real cheap one. Mm -hmm. And we so we had some lighting, but then we still didn't have plugs up. Yeah, uh, I, actually, the the lights. Well, we had... plug these in. <laughs> Stick it in your mouth and just run around in circles. So why didn't you concentrate more on lighting? A lot of the time we just didn't bother with lighting because we didn't have the time to f*** with it. Fair enough. Yeah. Now through um, <laughs> through the Innocence Saga, uh, after we got the, we, we we shot on the XL2, and I will say one of my big it was a big mistake that I made. Um, if you looked in the viewfinder and kind of like looked straight in, it would be kind of dark. Mm -hmm. But then if I if I if I if I tilt it up a little bit. <laughs> And, I, and it hit it at a different angle, it would brighten it up a little bit. So yeah, over brightened. So I, I went based on what it looked bright. I didn't allow the light to do its job, really. Um, you know, if, if I just wanted a little bit of light on, on the side of somebody's face and this part dark, I wouldn't bring in a light and, and, and focus that light. I just bring the light all the way back into the next room <laughs> and shoot it through the door or something. Or some of the times you just like tried to mess with it in post. Yeah. And that didn't work out too well. <laughs> Were there any scenes where the lighting worked? Now, I always liked the fireside stuff. The fireside stuff with that Civil War reenactment was just beautiful. I mean, the reflection, the golds and stuff like that was good. Yeah. Well, basically, we had a real fire, and we had the reflector, and we'd reflect it off of the, their faces so it kind of shimmered. I mean, even, yeah. even if you don't have a fire, you know, you, you, you get one of your interior lights, and you bounce it off of that. That reflector and you just kind of wiggle it a little bit and yeah, it gives us this great fire side. It works fine too. Yeah, but it, you got to use that gold side. That yeah, the side. gold side really makes it look like fire. There were some other, a lot of the other shots like, uh, of course, horror movies are always going to be dark, so that was perfect. <laughs> I was like, this is great. You know, we never actually accomplished a horror movie. It turned into a, like a comedy of errors. But, you know, it's already darker, so you don't have to worry about that too much. You just have to get a little bit of, like, a moonlight effect, and that's really all we needed. And most of the time, we actually had a full moon, so we're like, oh, we're good. <laughs> Done. Don't even bother unpacking. Trial and error here. Yeah, yeah and, that's the, and that was the whole purpose of it. Pretty much, we did that. We did the, 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 did the white side, the silver side, and the gold side, and I was like, ooh, Brad, <laughs> let's stick with this. <laughs> like, if I do this, it looks cool. <laughs> A fireside chat can add romance and sincerity to any scene. Accomplish a soothing golden glow by bouncing any bright light source, from a halogen work light to a professional quartz light, off of a golden reflector onto your subject. 
then wiggle the reflector for the desired effect. I'm April Cook and this has been your Wet Went Wrong Quick Tip. Brett, what kind of lighting advice can you give indie filmmakers? There are so many other great uh, uh, shows that, 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 that'll go into the details mm -hmm. um, of, of how to accomplish some great lighting techniques, but yeah. to accomplish those, you have to have lights to begin yeah. with. And I, I mean, we tried several different things by going down to Walmart and picking up some of those work lamps, mm -hmm. um, but those were so harsh, you've yeah. got to dampen those up with something. And see, once you start, even even that, you start getting into this time, you, you think, okay, well. Um, Probably in a couple of minutes to set up lights. Yeah, it's but like, it's not that. It's, it's not. not yeah. And, and even then, you sometimes. Keep, you have yeah. to keep moving and shift them around because you get different angles and stuff like that. And then you want to keep the lighting the same or similar. So it's not like, okay, this scene where you're talking to this guy and you turn over here and it's like, ah! It's completely different and it throws everything off. Yeah, and I was such a run and gunner as a shooter. I wanted to be able to have get the lighting set up so that it was good no matter where I looked. No yeah. matter where I went, I wanted to be able to, to have So usually lighting. what happened is when we did lighting, I would, instead of just having it on a tripod, I would have the legs folded down so I could actually carry it like it was a boom mic and I would follow him around with the light. So whenever he would just spin around the actor, I was following around with the light just right behind him. Damn it, Hal. What you got us into? I wanted to go Hulk. Now, the same thing with the boom actor. They'd be like right there following around. You, you, gotta, you gotta be right on his ass because he might, he might do whatever. He might spin, he might back up forward. You're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight with The Bitter Filmmakers. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Gotta give that a subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe.